Hi, fourth grade. It's Mrs. Pakora here, back for our uh, daily reading of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. In our last chapter, we read that uh, Fudge wanted to be a bird, and he found out that he couldn't. And he fell off the top of the jungle gym, and he lost his two front teeth. So let's see what adventures happen in Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. Oh, and boys and girls, if you hear snoring, once again, it's my puppy laying next to me. See, look, he's dreaming. His paws are moving. So I hope you don't think anyone is being bored by the book. He's just sound asleep. All right, here we go. Chapter 5, The Birthday Bash. <clears throat> I got used to the way Fudge looked without his top front teeth. He looked like a very small first grader. Dr. Brown, our dentist, said he'd have to wait until he was six or seven to get his grown-up teeth. I started calling him Fang because when he smiles, all you can see are the top two side teeth next to the big space. So it looks like he has fangs. My mother didn't like that. I want you to stop calling him Fang, she told me. What should I call him? I asked. Barley Drexel? Just plain fudge will be fine, my mother said. What's wrong with Barley Drexel? I asked. How come you named him that if you don't like it? I like it fine, my mother said, but right now we call him Fudge. Not Farley, not Drexel, and not Fang. What's wrong with Fang? I asked. I think it sounds neat. Fang is an insult. Oh, come on, Mom. He doesn't even know what a Fang is. But I know Peter, and I don't like it. Okay, okay. I promise never to call my brother Fang again. But secretly, whenever I look at him, I think it. My brother, Fang Hatcher. Nobody can stop me from thinking. My mind is my own. Fudge is going to be three years old. My mother said he should have a birthday party with some of his friends. He plays with three other little kids who live in our building. There's Jenny, Ralph, and Sam. My mother invited them to Fudge's party. Grandma said she'd come over to help. My father couldn't make it. He had a Saturday business appointment. I wanted to go to Jimmy Fargo's, but my mother said she needed me to supervise the games. The kids were invited from 1 until 2.30. That's only an hour and a half, my mother reminded me. That's not so bad, is it, Peter? I don't know yet, I told her. Ask me later. The kitchen table was set up for a party. The cloth and napkins and paper plates and cups all matched. They had pictures of Superman on them. Right before party time, Grandma tried to change Fudge into his new suit, but he screamed his head off about it. No suit! No suit! No, no, no! Oh, boys and girls, let me stop there for a second and tell you, back when this book was written, people got dressed up for birthday parties. They didn't wear just jeans or shorts and tennis shoes or flip-flops. They wore party dresses and little suits, and they got really dressed up. So that's what's happening here. So here we go, back to the story. My mother tried to reason with him. It's your birthday, Fudgy. All your friends are coming. You want to look like a big boy, don't you? While she was talking to him, she managed to get him into his shirt and pants but he wouldn't let her put on his shoes. He kicked and carried on until my mother and grandmother were both black and blue. Finally, they decided as long as he was in his suit, his feet didn't matter, so he wore his old bedroom slippers. Ralph arrived first. He's really fat, and he isn't even four years old. He doesn't say much either. He grunts and grabs a lot, though. Usually his mouth is stuffed full of something. So the first thing Ralph did was wander into the kitchen. He looked around for something to eat, but Grandma was guarding the place. She kept telling him, no, no, must wait till the other children come. Jenny arrived next. She was wearing little white gloves and party shoes. She even carried a pocketbook. Boys and girls, that's another word for purse. Besides that, she held on dirty jeans and an old sweater. Her mother apologized for her clothes, but said she couldn't do anything with Jenny lately, especially since she had taken to biting. What's she bite? I asked, thinking about furniture or toys or stuff like that. She bites people, Jenny's mom said. But you don't have to worry unless her teeth go through the skin. Otherwise, it's perfectly safe. I thought, poor old fudge, he can't even bite back since he hasn't got any top, top front teeth. I looked at Jenny. She seemed so innocent. It was hard to believe she was a vampire. Sam came last. He carried a big present for fudge, but he was crying. It's just a stage he's going through, his mother explained. Everything scares him, especially birthday parties. He'll be fine, won't you, Sam? Sam grabbed onto his mother's leg and screamed, Take me home! Take me home! Somehow, Sam's mother managed... Managed... Oh, I'm sorry. Somehow, Sam's mother untangled herself from Sam's grip and left. So at five after one, we were ready to begin. We had an eater, a biter, and a crier. 
I thought the 2.30 would never come. I also thought my mother was slightly crazy for dreaming up the party in the first place. Doesn't Fudge have any normal friends? I whispered. There's nothing wrong with Fudgy's friends, my mother whispered back. All small children are like that. Grandma got them seated around the kitchen table. She put a party hat on each kid's head. Sam screamed, get it off, get it off! But the others wore their hats and didn't complain. My mother snapped a picture of them with her new camera. Then Grandma turned off the lights and my mother lit the candles on Fudge's cake. It had chocolate frosting and big yellow roses. I led the singing of happy birthday. My mother carried the cake across the kitchen to the party table and set it down in front of Fudge. Sam cried, too dark, too dark! So Grandma had to turn on the kitchen lights before Fudge blew out his candles. When he was finished blowing, he reached out and grabbed a rose off his cake. He shoved it into his mouth. Oh, Fudge, my mother said, look what you did. But Grandma said, it's his birthday. He can do whatever he wants. So Fudge reached over and grabbed a second rose. I guess Fat Ralph couldn't stand seeing Fudge eat those yellow roses because he grabbed one too. By that time, the cake looked pretty messy. My mother... Oh, sorry, boys and girls. Stick it there. Finally, coming to her senses, took the cake away and sliced it up. Each kid got a Dixie cup, a small piece of cake, and some milk. But Jenny hollered, where's my rose? Want one too? Because her slice, a birthday cake, didn't happen to have one. My mother explained that the roses were only decorations and there weren't enough to go around. Jenny seemed to accept that. But when Grandma stood over her to help open her Dixie, Jenny bit her on the hand. She bit me, Grandma cried. Did she break the skin? My mother asked. No, I don't think so, Grandma said, checking. Good, then it's nothing to worry about, my mother told her. Grandma went into the bathroom to put some medicine on it anyway. She wasn't taking any chances. Ralph was the first one to finish his food. More, 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 he said, holding up his empty plate. I don't think you should give him any more, I whispered to my mom. Look how fat he is now. Oh, Peter, this is a party. Let him eat whatever he wants. Okay, I said, why should I care how fat he gets? My mother served Ralph a second piece of cake. He threw up right after he finished it. Me and Grandma took the kids into the living room while my mother cleaned up the mess. Grandma told Fudge he could open his presents while his friends watched. Jenny bought him a musical jack-in-the-box. When you turn the handle around, it plays Pop Goes the Weasel. When you reach the part of the song about Pop, the top opens and a funny clown jumps up. Fudge loved it. He clapped his hands and laughed and laughed, but Sam started to scream, No! He hid his face in his hands and would look up until Grandma promised to put the jack-in-the-box in another room. Ralph, Fudge opened Ralph's present next. It was a little wind-up car that ran all over the floor. I kind of liked it myself. So did Ralph because he grabbed it away from Fudge and said, Mine! No! Fudge shouted, Mine! When my mother heard the racket, she ran in from the kitchen. She explained to Ralph that he had bought the car to Fudge because it was his birthday. But Ralph wouldn't listen. I guess my mother was afraid he would throw up again, and this time on the living room rug. So she begged Fudge to let Ralph play with the car for a few minutes. But Ralph kept screaming it was his car, so Fudge started to cry. Finally, my mother took the car away and said, let's see what Sam brought you. Fudge liked that idea. He forgot about the little car as he ripped the paper and ribbons off Sam's package. It turned out to be a big picture dictionary. The same kind the Yarbies bought me a couple months ago. Fudge got mad when he saw it. No, he yelled. No more book. He threw it across the room. Fudge, that's terrible, my mother said. You mustn't do that to the nice book. No book, Fudge cried. Sam cried. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like my present. I want to go home. I want to go home. Grandma tried to comfort Sam while my mother picked up the book. She gathered the wrapping paper and ribbons and cards together. Fudge didn't even look at any of the birthday cards. Oh, well, he can't read, so I guess it doesn't make any difference. Peter, my mom said, let's start the games now, quick. I checked the time. I hoped the party was almost no over, but no, it was only 1.30. Still an hour to go. I went into my room where I had blown up a lot of balloons. My mother had the party book, and it says... Three olds like to dance around with balloons. When I got back to the living room, mom started the record player and I handed each kid a balloon. All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop there for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow so we see what happens at the birthday party.